Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. If you're new, then welcome. As you can see, I've got Arcadius. So today we're going to talk about his adoption story. So I was a sophomore in college at the time, and it was getting towards the end of my spring semester. And there was a guy back home that my family knew, and he had an iguana. Basically the backstory of how he got this iguana, he was basically a gift. And obviously, you know, pets don't make good gifts unless that person is planning on getting that pet anyway. They're prepared, they've done their research, they're ready to take care of that pet. That was not the case here. Um, basically, this guy knew he wanted a reptile. Didn't know what kind, but knew he wanted a reptile. And his buddy went out, went to Petco, got two iguanas, came back, and showed up at his house and said, here, I got you this. I got you this iguana, this cute little lizard. And I got one too. So they both had one. Needless to say, that friend that bought them, shortly after free home to the iguana, couldn't take care of it, decided it wasn't for, wasn't for him. But, uh, are you eating my, ow, ow, ow. Dude, can you tell he got me? He got me like right here. I don't know where. I wonder if you can see it. I don't know, it really hurts. So anyway, the guy that ended up with Arcadius tried to hold on to him, tried to keep him. He had him for about a year. He provided him a great big enclosure. He fed him his favorite foods, which in this case was broccoli. And I believe they fed him probably spinach and kale. So obviously not a very good diet. Um, they didn't give him UVB, hence why he has metabolic bone disease. I'll make another video about that, uh, hopefully soon following this one. But so yeah, he was just kind of a hot mess. We didn't know until we got him, but that was kind of what he was living in. He had a big enclosure. They socialized him and handled him a lot, which is why he's so great. They fed him what they thought were his favorite foods. They probably were his favorite foods. They just weren't good for him. And he didn't have UVB. But that's mainly because he hadn't done his research before getting the iguana. Because it was a pet, he didn't have the opportunity to do this research and figure out that that was what he wanted. So afterwards, when he kind of looked into iguanas, realized how big they were going to get, knew that they weren't continuously handled, they were going to get huge and be aggressive. So he knew he needed to rehome it to someone who knew what they were doing. So I'm not entirely sure if he just posted it or contacted my dad. I believe he contacted my dad and let him know that he was going to be getting rid of his iguana. So my dad texted me and said, Jesse, you know, this guy's getting rid of his iguana. Do you want him? And it was actually funny because I didn't know I wanted an iguana until about two days prior to that. I found an Instagram account, so I'll put her name right here because I don't know how to pronounce it, but a lot of you have actually told me to look into her, which is funny because she's the whole reason that I got an iguana in the first place. My family's kind of like the go big or go home, which is why we have a Great Dane. <laughs> but yeah, so normally I wouldn't recommend getting an animal like an iguana if you're in college. I'd recommend having a place where you're staying, maybe long term where you can have a large enclosure for them and provide a good life. But the area that we live in, reptiles aren't common. We don't live near any pet stores. All we have is Walmart. So no one really has reptiles. So despite me being in college and maybe not in a place to take on an iguana, I knew where I lived I was his best bet. So. I don't want to toot my own horn, but knowing that I was going to school to be a reptile keeper, I would be his best bet in the town that I lived in. If he went to anyone else, he, who knows where he would be right now. But, so we did all the research, we got him. Sure enough, he had extreme metabolic bone disease, but like I said, I'll put that in another video. But, so yeah, that's kind of his adoption story. Um, somehow my mom gave in, she forwarded me the email, and in the subject it said I can't believe I'm sending you this, 
because she ended up having a babysit him when we got him. But I was still at school for probably like another two weeks. So because he built him a big enclosure, it was like built into the wall, he couldn't bring it. So he brought him in the travel tub that you guys have seen in the other videos and said, oh, he'll be fine in this until Zoe comes home because I had a 55 gallon in the back of my car that I picked up on Craigslist. And my mom was panicking. She was like, I can't provide him with UVB if he's in a plastic tub. So luckily I had a 20 gallon hidden in my closet from a dollar per gallon deal at Petco that I picked up on my way home from Easter, on my way home for Easter break. She didn't know about it. Came in handy though. She was very grateful that I secretly bought another tank. But so she was able to use that until I came home. So he was in a 20 gallon, he was getting UVB, and he was getting a proper diet. It was after he moved in with us, the stress brought out signs of metabolic bone disease, which is how we knew that he had it, besides the fact that he didn't have proper care, so we figured. I won't get too far into this story because that's all about metabolic bone disease, so that will be in the next video. And he's gone down. I'll kind of end it there, leave you guys hanging, and you guys have to wait for the MBD video to learn more about what happened, what we did, and my recommendations for MBD. So don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss that MBD video and you can hear the rest of the story.